Walking along Margate Promenade is a man who would be most youngsters' favorite uncle. For Colonel Harold Chaplin is a designer and builder of radio-controlled speedboats. First, the colonel prepares for a solo trip by one of his boats in the bathing pool. It's a trial run to test the equipment, all of which he made himself. Now he brings it in. The run was successful, and the colonel is ready to go ahead with his more ambitious attempt to control two boats simultaneously. Even for experts like Colonel Chaplin, a pioneer of remote control development in this country, controlling two fast boats at the same time is difficult. Each boat is controlled on different wavelengths, but they share the same wave band. The band is narrow, and until recently, interference has made two-boat control almost impossible. The colonel, an engineering chief, has won an international cup in his hobby. His boats travel at 17 knots, or nearly 20 miles an hour. It's all done by radio, but if the control is remote, there's nothing inefficient about it. How's this for control? Although in this country it seldom seems warm enough to go swimming in the sea, at least it's reassuring to know that when we do, the chances are there's a team of lifeguards standing by. At Hearn Bay in Kent, for example, members are all volunteers, but regular training ensures that when it's the real thing, they operate with 100% efficiency. However, as well as these services are run, the time might well be approaching when they are replaced by a system more in keeping with the times, involving the use of a radio-controlled lifeboat. Now, let's see how this would work. The idea comes from a pioneer in the realm of radio-controlled model boats and aircraft, Colonel H.J. Taplin, who feels that his lifeboat has the advantage of a lifeguard in practically every situation, and more important, does away with the personal risk to would-be rescuers. More often than not, the boat would be used to tow out a rescue dinghy. In the case of apparent drowning, while the boat is being prepared, a lifeguard goes out first to keep the victim's head above water. But in the case of, say, yachtsmen or oarsmen in difficulties, a swimmer would not be needed. Technically minded, the boat is powered by a powerful 34cc air-cooled engine and is operated by a six-channel fail-safe radio. Furthermore, it's quite capable of tackling heavy seas. In fact, some years ago, before several improvements, Colonel Taplin sent it across the channel from Dover to Calais. With the victim safe on board, the launch speeds back to shore twice as fast as she could be brought back by another swimmer. However, the Colonel feels that even our fine lifeboat service could benefit from the use of the launch in, say, particularly rocky waters. For even if the boat was smashed on the rocks, there would at least be no casualties. The present prototype is, of course, made from wood, but operational models would probably have tougher glass fiber hulls. Another illustration of how even life on our pleasure beaches keeps up with the times. From a bygone age to a glimpse of the future, a preview through the performance of this model monoplane of an age of silent power, of the tomorrow when practically every form of transport will be driven by electricity stored in tiny silver zinc batteries. So now let's introduce Colonel H.J. Taplin, who designed and built this prototype, probably the first of its kind. Colonel Taplin, a pioneer airman and pilot of World War I, was already well known for his petrol and diesel engine models before he put into practice his theories on electric power. Weighing only two pounds, the silver zinc battery produces one-third of a horsepower for ten minutes, 
although obviously the larger the battery, the more power and endurance. And because there's no combustion, the motor runs almost silently. And so the Radio Queen, so named because it's radio controlled, like all his models, takes off on another test flight. It flies, of course, like any well-designed model does. So now let's take a look at a more conventional aspect of Colonel Taplin's hobby, radio controlled model speedboat. Now his son Michael assists him with the launching of Kittywake, one of many boats he has designed and built. The Kittywake, which has a 10cc overhead valve engine, reaches speeds of more than 12 knots. And the four-channel radio, which controls the rudder and engine, can be used up to a mile away. Now watch it go. Notice to what fine limits these launches can be controlled. It's almost as though there was someone in there staring. Even more incredible when you think that talented engineers like Colonel Taplin build these craft for pleasure. And yet it is often ideas developed in models like these, the monoplane particularly, that give a lead to the industrial designers of today.